Hi everyone, my name's Simon. Welcome to this instructional video on how to change your uh, Bossnut V2 drivetrain to a uh, single speed at the front and 12 at the rear or, or similar. Um, my one's currently 2x10, um, it's got the standard cranks etc on uh, and this will hopefully take you through what you need to do in regards to swapping out your drivetrain. Uh, you can see already that I've taken the chain off um, quite often you need to have a specific tool to take the chain off. I've got a, uh, a pressing tool that presses the rivets out, so I just use that. I'm not going to reuse the chain. Um, if I revert back to this setup, I'll get a new chain. So uh, at the moment, chain is off, but everything else is in position. The first job I'm going to tackle after I've taken the chain off is to take the, uh, the front derailleur off, or the front changer off. Um, it's a fairly simple process. But I'll undo the bolt to, uh, that holds the cable on and then obviously remove the, uh, the main bolt that holds it onto the frame. Easy as that. So the next thing to do is just remove the cable. It runs underneath the crank, the bottom bracket. Um, there's a, a locator under there, and then you've got a few zip ties to snip in order to get it out of the way. You might need to take the end cable crimp off just to make sure it all comes through cleanly. There you go. Next I'm going to deal with the uh, top end so we need to get the grip off. Then we need to loosen off the brakes and then the changer can come off once we've done that. Once they're off, put the various components back on that we want back on, so the brake goes back on. Just slide it on at first, get your handlebar grip, pop that on. Then tighten the grip up. Then you can seat the brake to the grip position. Just like that. The next bit we're going to deal with is the uh, rear derailleur. What you want to do is keep the sheath, the cable sheath in position generally. It just makes life easier. You can reuse it, it's not too much of a problem. So what we want to do is just snip the cable protect a cable end protector off again, if we can, just like that. Loosen the cable stop off. That releases the cable as necessary. So I went to the top end of the bike at the handlebars, removed the cable protector out of the way, took the wire from the inside of the cape from the inside of the protector all the way through, so it's now left with just the sheath there, and uh, we'll be able to feed, feed the new cable through in a minute and uh, get that in position. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the wheel, get that out of the way, and then we can take the, uh, the mech hanger out. To remove the wheel, just undo the quick release, move the derailleur out of the way, and the wheel will just drop out of the dropout. 
So now we're just going to remove the derailleur along with the, uh, the mech hanger. Because of the system that I'll be fitting, I'll need a different mech hanger. The one from the uh, Bosnut Evo fits. Um, the Go Outdoors one apparently is fairly weak, so I've uh, I've gone for a different one, a Race TI hanger that I got from eBay. Keep hold of the screws just in case in the future you revert. You've then got uh, the opportunity to put it back to standard if you ever come to sell it. So the next thing I'm going to do is attempt to remove the cassette. Um, to do this you need a couple of special tools, a chain whip tool and one of these uh, Shimano HG uh, cassette removal tools. This one I got from Go Outdoors, it was only £9, so pretty ba pretty basic but, but will do the trick. Make sure it locates in there properly, it's all good. And then pop this guy on, it's always fun trying to figure out which way to go. Put it on one of the outer rings, it's probably easier. Just line it all up. Once you've got it there, you'll be able to put some torque on it. And it's just a case of undoing that guy, just like that. And then you can start taking the cassette. So, apart. you've got your new cassette. Basically there's a little, there's a wider tooth there on this cassette, you can see. And on the, uh, on the actual freewheel, the, the hub, you can see there's a narrow bit and then a wider section there. Just slot the wider section over, slide straight on, and it's there. Make sure you know where that wider section is because your hub will probably come, or your, your cassette will probably come with something like this which you can then offer up to your hub and it will locate in position and you just slide them all on just like that. Dead easy. So once the cassette's located you can obviously put the lock ring back on or the new lock ring and then just tighten that by hand for the moment. It will have a uh, torque setting, this one is uh, 40 Newton meters, so uh, I'll go and get my torque wrench, make sure that's torqued up properly, and then I can crack on with the rest. So next is to get the uh, paraphernalia off the right hand handlebar, which is the uh, shifter for the rear. So once again, same as before, take your hand, handlebar grip off, nice and easy. Loosen off the shifter and loosen off the brake. Remove the shifter, just leave the brake on there for the moment whilst you go and get your new changer. So once you've got everything off, you can then uh, start putting bits back on. It's advisable at this point to uh, unravel the cable for your new shifter. Just make sure it's there and available. Once again, remove the brake. Pop your new shifter on. Pop your brake back on. And then pop your handlebar grip back on. Tighten your grip up. Then you can tighten your brake. about where your change is going to sit with your brake.
So some of you might have noticed earlier on that I uh, kind of put the shifter on upside down. Um, the way it's supposed to be is just like that. So uh, yeah, make sure you line it up properly and if it doesn't look right, generally it probably won't be. During the day yesterday I uh, converted my two speed front ring to uh, single speed. It was a fairly simple process but um, you have to undo the two screws on the crank here. One there, one there. Take those screws out and then there's a, a nut inside that you need to undo. Um, once you've taken that out, take the bolts out and you can then get the, uh, the crank out. The biggest problem I had with uh, the crank was getting the existing screws off the chain rings. I managed it in the end using a variety of tools and then uh, converted the, uh, the front end to a single uh, 32 tooth oval ring. When you put in your oval chain ring on, if you go for an oval chain ring, um, there is a, an arrow where the crank should be. So underneath the crank here, there's an arrow on the chain ring. You've got to orientate it the right way because otherwise if you do it 90 degrees opposite, then uh, you, you run the risk of not actually getting the benefit of the oval chain ring. So I've got to a point where I've uh, put the front chain ring on. That's all fitted now. Um, fitting is, reverse, is basically reversal of how you take it off. Put the crank through the hollow section from the other side you need a, to get the uh, the castellated bolt, uh, the castellated nut should I say, in, screw it up so that it brings the crank uh, in against the, uh, the, the bottom bracket. Um, make sure there's no play there, um, then you should be good to go with that. Uh, on the rear, eventually I did get hold of a, uh, a Race TI uh, mech hanger uh, on the back there, so it's the Evo one, or the, boss, uh, the, the Beast Nut one. The boss Nut one made it so that the um, basically the derailleur would actually hit the largest ring uh, when you when you put it on to uh, the largest ring it would hit that so uh, it wasn't particularly brilliant uh, following a bit of advice uh, from the forum members I've shortened the chain slightly by a couple of links what I did was I put the chain on initially to make sure it all worked uh, and then I've uh, shortened it so it now goes through the whole range isn't too tight when it's at its um, at its biggest so on the biggest ring um, the tightness of the chain isn't too bad um, so yeah chain itself is the uh, the SRAM unit it does have a uh, power link what they call a power link this guy here um, the way you get that on and off you've got to use special pliers to get it on and off uh, well off anyway uh, which are sort of like curved to go over the links over the rollers and you press it together now SRAM suggest that you don't want to be taking that on and off um, and, and reusing the link. I've seen numerous posts on uh, on the internet saying that people have used it, changed their, the link 10 times or, or taken the chain off 10 times, put the link back in and it's never been a problem so uh, I'm willing to risk it once. Um, I might get another one just to replace it with but I may not even bother. But yeah that's uh, pretty much it so now the uh, the thing you've got to make sure that you do is actually adjust it so that uh, when it's in the highest gear or the, uh, the, the the biggest gear, it's not going to overrun. So obviously, you've got rid of the dork disc. There's no point in having it on because it was smaller than this this this, uh, this cassette anyway. Um, to do that, you use the high-low range on the back of the derailleur. Uh, the the screw nearest or nearer the cassette uh, adjusts the amount of movement outwards it has and the, uh, the, the screw further from the cassette adjusts how much this moves in. So you can see, if, even if I push the lever, it doesn't even go further. So if, if I do it there, you can obviously see it will go on to the next gear. But if I cycle, if I press it again, it's not going to go further. So then the, the chain's not going to go into your spokes. Coming the other way, obviously you don't want it grinding on the uh, frame when you bring it down. So when you get it down to the bottom, you get it onto the bottom, you press the button, it won't click anymore and it's not rubbing against the chain. All right. You can see the angle at which the derailleur's at so that the chain's not too loose. Before, when I had a couple of links in, the chain was literally rubbing on the, uh, the upper cog uh, of the derailleur. But you can see it goes through it's all, all its range now, nice and swift, single clicks through the range. 
if you find it's going slowly or up or down, it's having trouble changing up or down, then you adjust it at the uh, shifter end uh, on the actual tightness of the cable. So the, the, the cable tension at the shifter end is what you need, need to do for that. Uh, the other thing to make note of is the B screw, this screw here that actually pushes the derailleur away from the, the cassette. Now with most SRAM systems you get a tool in your kit and what you have to do is just make sure you place that over the derailleur, the top cog of the derailleur and just have a look at where it's laid out on the, uh, the actual markings under here. Make sure it's all aligned uh, and that it's the, the, the right distance away because otherwise you'll run the risk of running that into the uh, into the big cassette and that's pretty much it really um, obviously comments below if you think uh, I've missed anything you uh, think I need to add anything uh, and if you've got any questions yeah just ask